Ladies and gentlemen, it is uh, with great pleasure and respect that I am introducing a very special guest, Dr. Shiva Ayer Durai, or I adore you, as he said, the inventor of email and a polymath. Uh, this guy holds four degrees from MIT, a world-renowned system scientist, inventor, and entrepreneur. He is a Fulbright scholar, Lemelson MIT Awards finalist, India's first outstanding scientist and technology of India origin, Westinghouse Science Talent Honors Award recipient, and on, I could keep going on. Dr. Shiva, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks. Uh, great to be here. Hope you're doing well. Now, uh, you've been um, a celebrity in recent days with the COVID-19 outbreak. Um, and just to get people up to speed, on, uh, if they don't know who you are, you can check out uh, Dr. Shiva at Vashiva.com, where you're going to find out he has many uh, of the positions that we talk about on this channel. He just published a book about a year ago, The Climate of Science. It's wor much worse than you think. And that's exactly what we talk about on this show. You can find Dr. Shiva on Twitter at Dr. Shiva at VA under slash Shiva on Twitter. He's got a YouTube channel with over 30,000 subs. So check him out over there. And uh, the MIT graduate PhD for U.S. Senate, Dr. Shiva at Shiva for Senate.com. So you, you have a very long history of academia and now politics. And we're very interested in your points of view. Uh, as a concerned scientist myself, can you just bring us up to speed on how you arrived at uh, politics, first of all, through the type of scientific up upbringing that you've come from? Sure. You know, I, I don't think, uh, I, I sort of find it shocking, actually, scientists divorce politics or claim to divorce politics from the science, when in fact, if you look at academics, they're the biggest politicians uh, when you actually study them. So there is no dichotomy here. It's just a false dichotomy. For me, it was always integrated because I grew up in India, which had a caste system as a child. So I was exposed to that, got very curious where um, systems like that came from, of systems of oppression. But I was also exposed to medicine as a young child because my grandparents were traditional um, farmers and my grandmother was practiced traditional systems of Indian medicine, which I saw her use. It's a very powerful system to actually diagnose and heal people. So I was exposed to both the caste system and, and medical systems as a, as a kid. So that really is where my journey started as a three, four, five year old kid. So this has been a long journey for me, probably over a 50 plus year journey. And, um, and you know, this is, it, you know, it's been long, it's been a long journey. And so, you know, I think when you look at an issue like this, um, it's a, a great opportunity to share knowledge with people about the fact that health, um, you know, all source of disease in many ways comes to the same thing, which is diet and food and how you take care of yourself and Western medicine, which has, I mean, amazing value in the area of crisis management, right? If you get your hand blown off, God forbid, or if you're in an accident or, you know, those kinds of situations is what Western medicine was created for. It was really created for war to put a soldier back on the field, but it knows nothing about understanding the body as a system. Um, and that is what other systems of medicine know. And so it, it's none of this is bad or good. It's just uh, the Western system of medicine wasn't really based on understanding uh, the body as a system and trying to figure out, you know, uh, ways to support that. Eastern systems were, and they used a different la language and a different lingua franca. So the, the fortune I had, because I was very interested in this, worked very hard since a kid, started working, you know, as a research fellow at Rutgers Medical School full time when I was a 14 year old kid, where I was doing medical research and also created the world's first email system uh, to help secretaries in that medical school go from the typewriter to the keyboard. That you just froze up a little there, Dr. Shiva. Uh, and we want to reiterate that we appreciate everything that you've said so far because well, we um, are huge advocates of traditional medicine on the show. I, I 
I teach how to make tinctures and plant medicines on our channel. We're huge advocates of teaching um, more historical uh, approaches to medicine, including new breakthroughs, which is showing exactly what we've been teaching for decades, that good health is directly connected to the gut biome. And it's actually what grandma said, you are what you eat, is very good advice. And it, in the types of Western diets with pr uh, polluted foods, with pesticides, reduced nutrition is really the, the problem. And a more integrated approach to medicine is, well, look, actually, look, look. is actually what's needed to heal society. Well, look, what's happened even in the quote unquote integrated medicine field, there's still a reductionism there. So one day, you know, it's raw food diet. Another day, you know, it's uh, eat fats all day. Today, it's the microbiome, you see? Um, but there's a reductionism that even people who claim to do integrative medicine do. And this is, this is sort of the catch-22 here. Um, the reality is you can understand the body with a very different type of science, uh, which is what I was able to integrate and develop in 2007 when I went back to India after I finished my PhD. What I uncovered was the traditional systems of medicine are not a system of medicine. They actually see the body um, not even as organ systems. They, they have, a, and in fact, most of the people in the Indian or traditional systems of Chinese medicine don't even understand their own system of medicine. They've been practicing it in a very uh, rote-like fashion. But it turns out there are really three forces in the universe, transport, conversion, and storage. Transport of information, matter, and energy. Conversion of information, matter, and energy, and storage. So if you go to um, your body, your system, we've made something, or systemshealth.com. These are two sites that are very important. They're two of the educational institutes I built after I came back from my full Fulbright. And what I've uncovered is that you can actually teach medicine for that matter, teach systems in a very different way. MDs, and in fact, the functional MDs, who are sort of the neo version of the, in, in, my, in many ways, they're sort of the not so obvious establishment of the modern MDs. They still say, oh, what's good for your thyroid? What's good for this organ? Um, so it's a dysfunctional way of doing medicine still, even though they call it functional medicine. There's a much different approach to doing medicine, which is where you start seeing the entire body as a system. And that means you can't go to the organ model, which is what the functional medicine guys do, or even the integrative medicine guys do. You need a completely different language for doing that. Engineers understand this, and that is what uh, developed out of my uh, research and work called systems health. So systems health, I can literally take anyone pretty much who has a, a decent understanding of, who can articulate it. You froze up when you were about to explain systems health. Um, is this, uh, something to do with, if you have a background in computer technology, you would be able to understand this? No, any, this is for a background in anything. You, you basically need to have a brain. Um, but this is what's happened with the entire, all these fields is we create experts who obfuscate very simple principles. The same principles that operate in your body are the same principles that operate in this microphone or this iPhone or this computer, everything. And once you understand those principles, you can apply that to anything. So that's what system self is. What we need to do is we have way too many experts and many of these experts don't even understand fundamental principles. And then so every generation, they create a new version of the same old thing, right? So now functional medicine is a big thing, right? or microbiome is a big thing. But they're all reductionism in many ways. Um, there is a different way to look at all systems, and that's what I've developed by literally integrating the foundations of Eastern systems with engineering systems theory. And what comes out of that is something quite beautiful that you can teach to people. So I started an institute called Systems Health, S-Y-S-T-E-M-S, -S health.com and uh you know since 2007 we initially did it at mit where we would people would show up on 200 people some of them who are the rmds engineers on the other hand where people had no engineering training acupuncturists you know uh, yoga people and literally within the first three hours they all started understanding what they were um 
what we were actually talking about. That's called systems health. So systems health, we did it at MIT, very successful. Then a bunch of the integrated medicine people like Deepak Chopra had me offer it. And then um, I've consolidated into a program people can literally take online. But my goal here is to basically come to this understanding that the whole, look, MDs, surgeons, I believe, do great work, anesthesiologists, but the average MD is basically a robot. They learn if this do this, if this do this, if this do this. They don't have a principled way of looking at the body, and that's what system health is. So it's quite a big breakthrough. Um, and then separate from that, you know, um, I'm not sure why it's going there, but system health really gives you this educational background, and then we've created tools. But our goal is to really uh, revolutionize medicine through education. Independent of that, the other thing we uh, that I created out of my PhD work at MIT is called CYTO. C Y T O S O L V E dot com. Yep, that's Systems Health. So, Systems Health is really a course program where there's, if you scroll down, there's a set of six modules. But I can literally take anyone as long as they have, you know, they're reasonably intelligent. Um, and whether you're a doctor, MD, and it's a complete different way to understand the body. They just you just froze up there when you said understand the body, and here are the one two three four five. Yeah, that six, you understand five, the body. Six, six, yeah. yeah. So you understand the body as a system by taking these courses, and then we provide the student a tool that they can actually use to interrogate themselves and find out what kind of system they are, and what disturbances have occurred to their system and how to bring their system back on course. This is how an airplane works. This is how pretty much every thing in nature works, but you have to understand what system kind you are. And essentially foods, exercises, these things are essentially inputs to manipulate things back to uh, your homeostasis. Uh, it's really unfortunate. You see these guys like Mark Hyman or whoever it is, right? They basically, the model that happens today in integrative medicine is they find the next guy and then he writes a book. Mo most of them don't even write their own books. Okay. And then they promote some theory for a while and that goes out of fat. And the next theory comes raw food, fats, right? Ketogenic diet, so on and so on and so on, which claim to be an alternative to the pharmaceutical models, but they too are reductionist. Uh, don't you think that that's just a capitalistic approach to making money off of the alternative view when, when your idea, which is more uh, broad based, is uh, maybe more appropriate? But those people are trying to help, but they're also trying to make money in a capitalistic society. So they're capitalizing on the newest fad, so to speak. Mm hmm. Yeah, I don't know what they're doing, but what I can tell you is if we really want to understand the, uh, the body and how it works, you need a different language. You need a different approach, which there's uh, what I'm talking about has been tested for thousands of years. And, you know, the reason you and I are talking today is not because of a scientist, but because of engineers. You know, I don't trust, frankly, scientists. I trust engineers. Scientists can bullshit a lot of ways because they basically do an observation, gather data, and they fit a line to a curve. How they fit that line to a curve um, can be done in, a, in all sorts of ways. But an engineer has to take understanding of physics and you have to build stuff. And if your stuff, stuff doesn't work, it doesn't matter what the hell, you can't talk your way out of a bag. So engineering systems principles are a much, much closer understanding of reality. Um, so there you go. So, so system self is an engineering systems approach to understand the body. But the cool thing is anyone can learn it. Anyone. That's awesome. And uh, so guys, check out that resource uh, that we'll leave you links below. Uh, now, we're, you were just talking about graphs and we're looking at some graphs. Not to change the subject too drastically, but we are. Uh, let's talk about what's happening globally with this, uh, what the World Health Organization has uh, termed a pandemic. 
and the shutdown of society and the breakdown of markets. What are your thoughts on what's going on? Um, what do you believe the threat level is? And and before that, I, what I have gleaned due to my research is that the modern hospital system is ill-prepared for a, an actual pandemic, and that's what we should glean from this. Um, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think the first thought, let me just I want to bring something up here if I have it here. I think it's easy if I just share this with you. Um, if you actually understand what's going on, you know, there's a tweet that I did um, several, I think about a week ago, which literally, I think here it is. Here's a tweet. I think it's been seen now by a million people, if you can see it here. Okay, this tweet. And this tweet has gone to about a million people and basically says, as an MIT PhD in biological engineering who studies and does research nearly every day on the immune system, the coronavirus fear mongering by the deep state will go down in history as one of the biggest fraud to manipulate economies, suppress dissent, and push mandated medicine. So that pretty much says it all in less in about 140, whatever the number of words is that Twitter allows. Um, but that's my position on this. And that sort of summary tweet right there is 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 ultimately, you know, the sort of the consolidation of sort of 50 years of my work, you know, in politics, medicine, and watching what's going on. And when you look at what's going on, Western medicine, I keep saying, was designed for really wartime medicine. And this is what we need to understand. And I wrote a paper several years ago that was published in a journal of engineering, where I looked at Western medicine as a system. It, it has done amazing things after you get horribly hurt, right? After you're in the late stages of disease. Um, that's what it was created for. Those were the system requirements. So that's where we need to start um, to understand Western medicine. So frankly, it knows very little about how the immune system works. It knows very little about, you know, how food affects the immune system. So it's basically completely ignorant. And so what it does is because of that ignorance, it creates um, ideas, fake problems and fake solutions which are then used to manipulate people through the fake media. And it has an end. The end is a profit motive to imprison people into a way of caring for their bodies, which is in a wartime model, okay? Which is to hit yourself and bombard yourself either with foods that don't support you, with medicines that don't support you, or with vaccines that don't support you. But if people can just keep this simple, instead of getting it too complicated, Western medicine was created for war. Okay? It was not created for health. Yeah, we, we concur. You froze up there. And, and we believe the problem is there's not enough preventative measures that are taught to our children. And, and what I mean by that is making smart choices in your diet, first and foremost. Uh, we have a permaculture farm here because we're trying well, to grow to, yeah, the health. I think you have to go. Yeah, I think. Go ahead. That's definitely true. But there's something deeper here, which is a reason it's not taught is because there's a huge profit motive to get people sick. And this is where the politics are important. The entire model of medicine or the quote unquote healthcare system is a top down model we will tell you what is good for you, right? It's about one size fits all. And that's where it comes from. So when you look at a family where someone, you know, has a cold, well, if you have a family of five, six people, it's not like everyone got that cold, right? Someone got it. The other four people may, may, may had nothing, right? So Western medicine can't explain that. Why did that happen? Why did some people get it or not? Instead, let's go vaccinate all the five people, right? Well, in my opinion, Dr. Shiva, it started uh, when I was uh, decades ago, when I was in grade school, with the false food triangle of the food pyramid, and they kept manipulating it that way. If the dairy industry or the beef industry gave them enough money, they would readjust the triangle. And then in my recent research, uh, we've discovered in the last two decades, the revolving door with big ag and the pharmaceutical companies, as well as 
our own U.S. government where you have CEOs in Monsanto switching places with the FDA and and on and on. So it's a wag the dog where if they keep you sick and they grow the foods that make you sick, the pharmaceutical industry can develop the drugs for the diabetics and so on and so forth. It's a broken record of um, basically uh, mistrust and, and payoffs. So this is crony capitalism at its best. Yeah, but we got to also understand people have elected these people, right? People have elected these people. So human be and so and the reason this has occurred is because we've created this dialectic in the United States, Republican versus Democrats. Democrats supposedly care for the people. Democrats are into health and well-being and are into yoga, right, and meditation, et cetera, right? That's typically you can think about it that way. And Republicans are all white guys who basically want, who hate um, black people, right? And et cetera, a couple of other things like this. Um, but what's interesting is that both of these establishment parties uh, work together. And in fact, you could argue the people who claim they want to help other people. If you look at the academic and the Hollywood establishment, you know, the people who do yoga and hang out, they have a very um, uh, ill understanding of even the, the traditional systems of medicine. The traditional systems of medicine were based on. You just froze up at traditional systems of medicine. I apologize. I'm really enjoying this conversation. So what hap what's up with the traditional systems of medicine? In terms of medicine, when you got training, when you, when you proceeded to learn yoga or meditation, that was at the end of a long process. After you uh, worked hard, you, um, you know, uh, learned to be a good human being. Then you were taught yoga and medicine at the end of that process. So when I look at sort of the new age community, I mean, for example, you go to Western Mass, many of them vote for Elizabeth Warren, voted, okay? Well, she's a woman who voted for the Monsanto Protection Act, all right? Yet the, 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 the hippie elites, right, who have, have their incense and they dress in their tie-dye, et cetera, right? And they, very nice people, some of them, right? But in many ways, uh, they do not understand that they live in an elitist model themselves, where the real essence of a lot of these uh, uh, traditional teachings are not even understood well. So, for example, with this coronavirus thing right now, it's fascinating to watch. There are a set of mothers who are fighting. You know, a lot of them co came to our campaign, and the other ones are saying, "Let us meditate. Let us take time to support." you know, this politician, that one, and let's sit in our homes and be quarantined. There's no fighting spirit in them, right? They don't understand the dynamics of what they're saying is basically supporting the establishment, which has created fear, and they're supporting this whole model. So for me, that's why it's important. It's not sufficient that you just learn, you know, what to juice, right? Oh, I do these tinctures or I do these herbs. If you don't understand the dynamics of politics. You're basically sort of a, uh, a sheep going to your own slaughter. Yeah, well, that's the nature of politics. Disinformation, picking sides. No, it's the nature. No, it's, it, it's not that. What's not the nature of politics, it's the nature of people who are ignorant. I'm saying the same people who talk about enlightenment and they're going to eat this food and that food. You know, those people want to live in their bubble. I'm, I'm not. It's easy to understand the establishment like the big pharma companies. That's easy. Okay. You don't have to be that bright to understand that. What I'm saying is there's a not so obvious establishment and that not so obvious establishment are these people who claim they care for your health different from pharma. You follow? But yet they do not want to, to really fight. Okay. No, they um, want, they want so you to get recurrent. They want you to get vaxxed. And they don't know what's in the vaccine. They want you to what? These are the same people that want you to get vaxxed and your children to be vaxxed. The ones that are doing yoga. And they, no, don't, no, but, they don't know what's in the vaccine. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Uh, exactly. But I...
<laughs> movement and do yoga and all this, okay? When you look at their behavior with the coronavirus, right? There's a discernment that they don't have. They're saying, yes, let's meditate and pray and stay in our homes. Um, they've built little careers of being anti-vaxxers, okay? But they really don't understand the fundamentals that the anti-vax movement has nothing to do with vaccines per se. It has to do with this larger struggle for freedom. You say, this is not about vaccines or no vaccines. It's about the fact that the state wants to impose its will on you and to control your bloodstream. And that control model is part of a larger issue of wanting to control not only what you eat, what you're vaccinated with, but are you allowed to own guns or not, right? It goes down to many, many things. And the same, some of the same people, like a Bobby Kennedy, who's in this anti-vax movement, he endorsed Hillary Clinton, who's Miss Vaccine Queen. Okay? Easy. It's so ab- it's, it's, it, what I'm tra- we're living in a very bizarre time where people don't see the wool that's right in front of their eyes. There, there is the first problem. You know, they're, they're following what yeah, main, so I think, I think that's, mainstream media headlines. Yeah, I think this is. And there's very little independent thinking. Well, well, well you know what I noticed? It's, it's 50-50, actually, to be fair. You know who actually gets it? They don't even have to think about it. The people who you use their hands who actually are solving a problem and who have to deliver something to a customer, like a plumber, an electrician, an engineer, a surgeon, not an MD, or an anesthesiologist. These people are doing something a little bit different. They actually have to solve problems minute by minute by minute, okay? Or someone dies. Or a pilot, okay? These people already get it. The people who do not get this are actually dumb are the vulnerable, educated elites who do not produce anything. They live in the world of abstract ideas, your lawyers, right? Your person who learned, I don't know, aardvark science or something, you know, not, you know how aardvarks behave, you know? Um, I'm saying it's the people who don't have to deal with the nuts and bolts of physical reality. Look, I've been going and collecting signatures, right? I'll go to the working class neighborhoods, everyone signs or not. I go to the bourgeois neighborhoods where the white liberal elites are, they're all wearing masks and respirators and gloves as though the world is gonna to come to an end. So the so I don't frankly care for these people because they're very, very elitist. They're actually, mess, many of them are very racist and many of them think they know it all and they're the first ones to be imprisoned. But the people who actually get it and they don't even need to watch any of my videos, they just get it intuitively, are the people who... Yeah, our civil liberties are at risk, and many of the elitist types don't even know what a civil liberty is, in my opinion. And the biggest threat to civil liberties is uh, through this fear-mongering. They're pushing the fear, and and I'm sure you've seen the Bill Gates video circulating in the last 24 hours, where his solution to this is that Everyone gets tested in the world and you get a paper that you're immune to the disease and that, and that will allow you to travel and do other things. Just a sick uh, dystopian future they're proposing. Yep. Yeah, he should be. Yeah. Guys like him, guys like uh, Zuckerberg, um, guys like Hillary Clinton, people like Hillary Clinton, et cetera, the Obamas. These people have never, frankly, um, had to ever suffer. They all grew up, you know, pretty well. If you look at what they actually grew up with, um, Bill Gates, for example, didn't create DOS. He bought it from someone and flipped it. Um, both guys went to Harvard, right? And so these people do not come from a working class background where they've actually had to work and put in their time. So they actually have an elitist model of what human existence is and with them on the top, with them knowing better than you or I do. So there needs to be, there is a division in this world. The division is those people who think they know better than you or I, and then everyday people actually produce something and work to make stuff, you know, actually make it. They're involved in the production process. 
So that's the world that we have. And um, that's it. to me, it's a good division that's coming up. And, and it's, it's a good thing that's coming to the head because what we see right now with this coronavirus is an attempt by that former set of people to use fake science uh, to unleash fear and to impose fascism. That's what that's what's actually going on. And it's happening in real time. Yeah, it's, it's amazing to watch it happen. I wish I lived up in Massachusetts and I could go vote for you. Uh, do you want to end the, the conversation? Well, on? you can give us. Oh, there. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, so, so there's two ways people can help us is the election in Massachusetts is becoming because someone like me is running. It's not another, you know, I'm running against three lawyer lobbyists. They're very afraid of me because last year or two years ago, we ran against Elizabeth Warren, the fake Indian. We ran a full <laughs> campaign, which said only the real Indian can defeat the fake Indian. And the white liberal elites would call me a racist. When in fact, they're the racist because they have narrowly defined racism in their own ways. Don't use the N word, you know, don't. Um, if you support affirmative action, this, so their definition of racism is created by racists and they want to divide poor blacks, poor whites, poor people of color for their interests. So they're actually the racists. So when I ran, we developed a huge following here in Massachusetts on the ground and we have, you know, thousands of volunteers right now and my winning. As soon as you said winning the deep state cut in and cut you off. So what is your winning going to do out there and how can we support you? So that's where we need to understand, Dave, it's not out here. All right. In Massachusetts will be a shockwave for this whole country because guys like me are a, are not ever supposed to run for a U.S. Senate seat. Okay. People like me are not supposed to win. And people like me do not get the kind of following that's created by the hard work we've been doing. So anyone listening out there, it doesn't matter if you're in Massachusetts, it's a federal seat. Everyone should donate to our campaign, whatever you can. Everyone should volunteer. Uh, we have a whole way people can participate even though you're outside of the state. Because having someone like me, who's actually one of you, a working person who came from nothing, worked his butt off, a few people have ever had one of them be in the US Senate. OK, so if you consider what, you know, we've done with a simple camera, no lighting, no Botox um, and how much we get our message out. Imagine having the United States Senate seat for six years and how much truth will come out and how much um, firepower will come out. So I'm particularly in Massachusetts. You have to understand Massachusetts is the center of the deep state. Yeah, you heard in a one it. One mile radius between MIT. You heard it here first. What do you got? An earthquake the over there? What's that? What's going on? An earthquake over there? No, I don't hear anything. <laughs> There's some really loud background noise. Uh, oh. So, guys, you heard Dr. Hmm. Shiva. If you want to kick him in the nuts, he's running for Senate, and we can all help the campaign. We can actually get one of us in there for six years, and that would be awesome. Yeah, one of the things we've done is if you click on that donate button there, I want to show something. I hate taking stuff from people for nothing. So anyone who donates to our campaign, what I want to do is give people something back. And one of the things I think I can offer people is knowledge. So if you scroll down, anyone who donates 25 or more, we give people a, uh, a very amazing book that took probably 30 years to write called System and Revolution. And that book really teaches people how the principles of systems go through everything in nature and actually teaches them how their body is a system. And then I actually give them access to a tool, um, which if you go to the top of this page, I, I don't know where you are, but it's a tool that actually allows them to understand their body as a system right there, access to your body, your system software. So, um, and we do it for 25 bucks, okay, which is nothing. Um, at one point, I think we used to sell that tool for around 2,000 bucks, okay? So, the goal is to create an army of people who understand that their body is a system. So they 
you froze up. So don't you can figure everything out. Yeah. So donate 25 or more and you actually get the book. You get to actually get the hard copy book and the software, correct? No, it's the electronic version of the book, okay. so it's online, and you get the software. Okay. All right, so you get an ebook um, and the software so, to access your body, your system. And you also have lots of free videos up on your YouTube yeah. to go over this as well, right? Tons of videos. But the point is we need a revolution for truth, freedom, and health in this country. And that revolution is not going to be led by, you know, someone from the top, typically that's what happens. You know, they impose their leaders. They don't give us one of our own. And I'm one of you and you're within me. You see what I'm saying? So it's a very different dynamic here. And um, that's what this is about. It's about educating people about the dynamics of truth, freedom, and health. And once people get it, um, then they're going to become their own leaders. And I just want to be a humble catalyst for that. Well, we appreciate everything you said tonight. And guys, if you're listening, I'm sure you appreciate it as well. Let's all join the army over here at Shiva Nation or Shiva for Senate. Let's do it. Let's donate 25 or more. Get the books. Access your body. Get the ebook on Systems and Revolution. Check out Dr. Shiva's YouTube where he has hundreds of videos. Um, check him out on Twitter. Check out his websites. It's a pleasure. We love having you on the show. Hopefully, we can have you back. Uh, after you're in the Senate seat that we're helping support. Yeah, everyone out there, go to Shiva for Senate. Um, and you, I also just today, Dave, created a site called truthfreedomhealth.com, which is on the Shiva for Senate landing page. And it has all the videos that people have said, thank you so much, thank you so much. You know, can you put something where I can get access to all of them? So we put them all here. And if you look, it starts with the coronavirus one called the truth about the coronavirus. It actually gives you a solution based on a protocol, a letter that I proposed to the president of the United States saying, let's focus on vitamin A, let's focus on vitamin D, vitamin C and iodine. OK, I mean, there's many protocols you could do, but this is getting back to very simple basics. And it says, let's not lock up everyone. Let us take all the people who are healthy, give them some maintenance protocol for A, D, C, and, you know, and, and iodine. Let's take the people who are immunocompromised, give them some, a different protocol of very basic vitamins, which have been used for hundreds of years. And then let's take the people who are actually testing positive or people who are uh, critical for the critical in particular, give people, um, you know, uh, IV vitamin C drip, which has also been proven. So it's a very simple, uh, this website will give you tons of videos so basically, some people said, you know, I watch these videos and I raise my IQ. Um, and that's what we want to do. Well, you're a genius and you're a hero. And uh, we support everything you're doing over there. Dr. Shiva, MIT PhD for Senate, and uh, he, the truth. I mean, he and check him out, the truth, freedom, and health, and get the truth about the coronavirus and everything that's going on. We need to know about more of the body system and I believe this integrated health is the future true integrated health and actually understanding the body as a unit it's a pleasure Dr. Shiva we'll talk to you soon be safe be well take care nice meeting thanks Dave be well thanks